Everybody's mad about something. Recently, I got attacked online by some gay bloggers and it hurt my feelings. I have no problem with gay people, but I fucking hate bloggers. I'm not saying it because this person was gay. They was acting like a bitch online. They was like mischaracterizing my jokes, trying to make a point off of me. When it was really, it's like, yo, I'm your ally, motherfucker. I'm not trying to stop gay people. I got better shit to do. This motherfucker was saying things to try to get gay people to beat me up. <laughs> Seriously, he was like, Dave Chappelle's jokes. I don't know how he actually talks when he's making his voice up. <laughs> Dave Chappelle's jokes were an affront to the manhood of all gay men. What the fuck does that mean? I didn't say anything that would allude to gay men not being men. I know you men. In fact, what could be manlier than fucking another guy in the ass? It's the most gangster shit I've ever heard of in my life. I told you I'm not cut out for that, I'm a pussy. You know what I said? That's all I said. First of all, I'll tell you right now what I said. Uh, and I will tell you that this was not a joke, it's a true story and I just happened to tell it. All right, what happened was, I went to a gallery party, all right? I don't know who in here has ever been rich before, but these are very nice parties. Uh, you know, wine and cheese and ball of conversation. And there was a few eccentric types, one of which was a very wealthy man that happened to be wearing a dress. I don't know what you call him, this is a tranny or dra a drag queen, perhaps. Whatever it was, this is definitely a man. And this man, was definitely on drugs. I don't know what kind of drugs he's on, but I knew he had too much. He didn't look good. It's like this, he's like, ah. He looked sick, and all his friends were standing around him, concerned, trying to revive him. I don't know whether he looked like some kind of gay CPR, those fanning and shit. I saw all this from a distance. Now, I should have minded my own business, but I got curious. I was like, oh. And I went over there, all I said, I said, excuse me, gentlemen, gentlemen, is he okay? And then they looked at me like I was evil. Oh. She is fine. I'm sorry, I didn't know this is what we were doing. Um, here's my thing. I would support anybody's right to be whoever they feel like they are inside. I'm your ally in that. However, my question is, to what degree do I have to participate in your self-image? Is it fair that I have to change my whole pronoun game up for this motherfucker? That doesn't make sense. Seriously. If I put on an Argyle sweater and I'm like, hey everybody, I feel like a white guy in this sweater and I want some goddamn respect in a bank loan. That's not gonna work. Give a fuck how I feel. Why don't I give a fuck how you feel? Nigger is a pronoun. But there was no time for a philosophical debate. This was an emergency situation. I said, fine. Sorry, guys. I was just worried because... because she looks terrible. And she just fell off the bench. It appears that her dick is popping out of her dress. No matter if I call an ambulance champ, I'd rather not be at a party where a tranny ODs. There's too many questions to answer. <laughs> okay, I've been through this before. I had a friend from high school. Now, in high school, this guy was a thug, right? He was a fucking dope boy. He did it all. He's a wild dude. People used to be very scared of him. And then after high school, word on the street was he'd come out the closet. I personally didn't believe it. I bring him up because last year, he calls me out of the blue like, yo, what's up, man? I got your number from so-and-so. I heard you're going to be in New York doing a show. Could I get some tickets? I was like, fuck yeah, get some tickets, man. How you been? He said, well, we'll catch up at the show, man. But yo, I, I appreciate it. I'll see you soon. I said, all right, man, take care. And I was about to hang up, and I couldn't resist. I was just like, hey, nigga, I heard you was gay. What's going on with that? <laughs> and I wish I didn't ask, because he sounded like he was dying to talk about that shit. And he had a long story about it. And it's not that I didn't care,
but I was, you know, I don't like talking on the phone. I was watching TV at the same time. So I just wasn't really paying attention like I should. But I was trying to sound supportive, but I didn't really know what to say. So I was just like mumbling shit throughout this conversation. I was just be like, oh, you know, nigga, you gay, man. You just gay. Like, oh, man. This went on for a while, and then finally, I just had to say something like definitive to get him off the phone. And I was like, hey, man, you know what? Don't let people get you down, all right? And uh, the next time someone tries to make you feel bad about yourself, just remember, everybody fucks funny to somebody. <laughs> he didn't like that shit. He's like, what the fuck does that mean? I said, huh? He said, you saying I fuck funny, motherfucker? I said, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying everybody's different. He said, you ain't say different, nigga. You say, it's, you say it funny. What's so fucking funny about the way I fuck? And I said, hey, man, I fuck feet. He said, what? <laughs> oh, this is not a joke, ladies and gentlemen. I get women to squeeze their feet together like this, and I fuck them right in that little space in their feet. <laughs> but you can't build a community behind that shit. There's no flag for us. <laughs> that shit made him laugh. And the next day, after the show, I saw him backstage. He was like, yo, what's up, man? I'm like, oh, shit, what's going on? And he had his buddy with him. He goes, Dave, I want you to meet Manuel. Manuel's my fiance. We're in New York getting married because it's legal here. I said, oh, oh, well, uh, gracias. And he went to go get some drinks. And then my buddy looked at me, he was like, so Dave, what do you think? <laughs> and I started mumbling again. Oh, you're gay, nigga, you know, you're just gay. Uh... He said, yeah, I'm a little nervous about getting married, man. It's a big step. I said, yeah, it is, it's a big step. He said, well, you've been married for a while. You got any advice for us? <laughs> no, I'm married to a woman, sorry about that. And he corrected me, he said, no, you married the person that you love. So it's essentially the same. I said, you know, man, uh, the problem with that statement is that it makes the assumption that I love her. But... <laughs> you guys lighten the fuck up. Of course I love my wife. She laughs at this shit. As a matter of fact, she eats and spends this shit. You know what I told him? I told, I told him, I said, you know what you should do, man? First of all, you, should, you shouldn't do it. Uh, I'm talking about being legally married. It's not that you're gay as much as just legal marriage is a fucking diabolical leverage game in the United States. I'm just being honest. The void of religious significance or the idea of love, marriage is nothing but an awful contract that you shouldn't sign. I'm just being real. Because you start out loving each other, and then like two years later, you're just building a case against one another. <laughs> for a hypothetical court date that may or may not ever happen. <laughs> you throw being gay on top of that, that shit is explosive. <laughs> like it's that Ray Rice shit. Okay, right after Ray Rice went through all that shit, I was at a party and I met this kid, Michael Sands. You know Michael Sands? Very nice guy. He's the first openly gay NFL player. And Mike's a very nice guy, a very brave guy. But when I met him, I couldn't help but thinking, this wife up in the elevator. Is that domestic violence or is that just two niggas working shit out in the elevator? You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, I give all married men the same advice, gay or straight, get a dog. His dog will love you all the time, but she's not going to. <laughs> Just real talk, I, mean, I, didn't even, I didn't even know about dogs, and my kids got the dog. They brought him home from the shelter, and I didn't even want him. They were like, can we keep him? I said, nope. I said, where'd you even get this dog? They're like, we got him from the shelter. I was like, ew. <laughs> Probably something wrong with him. <laughs> Can't keep him. And then my kids started crying and screaming like the dog had gambling debts. Please, Dad, if you don't let us keep him, they're gonna kill him. I was like, oh. All right, you can keep him. And this dog was a menace. I hated his guts. Then one night I smoked a bunch of weed and I was eating a sandwich. 
And Baba came over. Baba's a dog. He came over and was staring at me. This would make you very uncomfortable if you're just looking at you. Like... I had to give him a piece of my sandwich so he'd go away. And that's how we became friends. Now, if you see me walking down the street with Baba, I ain't got no leash or nothing. He walks right next to me. If I, if I stop, he'll stop. And if I go, he'll go. And all my friends are like, yo, Dave, that shit is dope. How you train Baba to do that shit? Hmm? I've never trained Baba. Just a messy eater. If I drop food and Baba's not around, all I gotta do is call him. Baba! He's a black dude's dog, so he doesn't come right away. He peeks first to see what's going on. <laughs> I gotta tap my foot so he can see the food. Over here, little buddy. And he's like, thanks, Dave. He'll come get it and run off. But he knows all my habits. Like, if he smells weed in the house, he'll be like, no, nah, this motherfucker's about to eat. And he'll just come running. <laughs> Baba got me through a very difficult time.